List all you can. First hand I see. Go ahead, click it. Characteristics to hold office in the House and the Senate. What are the characteristics? Go ahead, Tim. You've got it first. And walk around. I'm going to be keeping score over here, so don't stay here. Tim's got it. Your group. Anybody? Minimum age, 25. Tell me more. For the House. House elections every two years. Go. Senate every six years. Minus one. Right, that's president. Who's next? Erica, communists. And go ahead, move around. You don't have to stay up here. Yeah, dig in. Go ahead. Five. Four. You have to be 25 years old. Already been said. Minus one. Oh my God. Huh? Go you ahead. have to have lived in the country. You have to establish seven years of residence Shut up. in the country. Don't have it. Wait, what is he doing? Sure sure you sure actually do have to be 30 years old to be in the Senate. Where you said that? Where you said that already? Y'all said 25. Oh, we said 25. Y'all said 25. Oh, said 25. Said 25. Said 25. Said 30. I didn't hear that. Line. The line. Go ahead. Six year terms for the Senate. Go. Let's get it. Only one, oh, 100, 100 members. 100 senators. Go. 435. 435 House. Nine year Go. Residency for the Senate. What's that? Nine year residency. Nine year residency. Nine year residency. Nine year residency. We're about a I think y'all did say that. Whoa. Yeah, minus one. Two year residency for the House. Two year residency. No, no, minus no. one. Yeah. Term. <laughs> Two year <laughs> term. Like, you Once you excited. miss. You don't get to answer again until so the next get question. Because she keeps getting them wrong. No, 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 no. Yeah. We get a point back. We get a point she back. She keeps getting them wrong. We get a point back. That's not fair. You did give me the last correct answer. Go ahead, touch the house. Pick me a category. Wait, never picked us. Wait, question. How did they get points for saying the length of the term that a senator or a representative served? That's not a characteristic to be eligible to run for office. It's on the sheet. It says characteristic. It is on the sheet. But that's not something that you, like, you don't become a senator you because you've already this. served two years. I just won. Pick me a category. <laughs> that it doesn't work like that. Pick me a category. Got to go. Got to go. Sorry, you're letting your man's work. Articles. Articles for what? Like we big balling. Two. Two articles. <laughs> yeah. List all you can. First and I see has got it next. Go. Go ahead, click it. Sex offenders. What's the significance of sex offenders? Oh, I know. Go ahead. Um, they can't. Um, five. Oh my God. Four. Somebody help them. Them children. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. Minus two. Yeah, we went over sex offenders. Anybody? Five. Four. You have to be registered on the sex offenders list. What? Minus one. <laughs> you have to be, your, your record has to be expunged before you get a job in corporate America. He better not mind this one. Sex offenders. Remember the Georgia law? Remember the law that dealt with ex post facto laws? No, you didn't. <laughs> Better take a look at that. Pick me a category. Gotta go. Go ahead, touch the house. I don't want to pick you. Pick me a category. Gotta go. Oh, Congress for three. Congress for three. What one thing must happen for a bill to become a law? First hand, go. It has to go to committee. It has to be voted on. It has to go back to the floor. Uh, I just need one thing. What's the one thing that's got to happen? Oh, it has to be approved by both the House and the Senate. A little bit more. The first thing. What'd you say, Thomas? You said something. I said the president. Interviews. Gotta be passed by the House and the Senate. There's something else. And then the president has to sign on it. No, that's okay. minus three. Wow, Chief. It's a three-point question. Go! What must happen? There must be an interest group that has an idea, like a political party. That minus three! <laughs> Boy, it's going to be bad. I said if y'all gave good answers, what's the one thing that must happen? It has to get voted on the floor by both the House and the Senate. I've heard that, but there's something else. Once they approve it, then it goes to the president. President reviews it, and then they have to send it But there's back. something when they approve it that's really, really important. It has to go to the joint committee. The joint, the joint, the joint, joint committee. What does the joint committee do? Um, the joint Five. Five. Um, You're right. What does the joint committee um, do? Um, Four. Oh, no. They negotiate. Three. For 
for what? They um, negotiate to make sure that both the House and the Senate have a consensus on what's been like approved and what needs to go out of the bill. You said consensus. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> So you got one now. Touch the house. Pick me a category. Let's go. Gotta go. Um, uh, articles three. Articles for three. List all you can. Click it. Signing statements. What is a presidential signing statement? You've got it first. You've got it next. Five. Four, three, two, it's a one, go! No, it's, I was talking, I was talking, I was talking. Go, Alice. It's a written pronouncement issued by the President of the United States upon the signing of a bill into a law. Okay, what does that mean? Once the President writes it down, it goes into effect immediately without approval necessary by the Congress or Senate. What does that mean? It goes into effect. As soon as the President writes it down, it immediately goes into effect. So, so for example, George Bush wrote um, a signing statement at, a at the bottom of the act following 9-11 that basically said, yes, we're going to put more protections into place to minimize torture, but if I find certain situations where I think this is necessary, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... One, two, three. We're the communists! We're the communists! One, two, three. Now you're making sense. George W. was given a torture ban bill and he signed it into law, but he issued a presidential signing statement. Hang on. He wrote a signing statement at the bottom that said, I reserve the right not to enforce the ban. And as soon as he signs it, it immediately goes into effect. Well, now, we didn't say that. Signing statements, what do, they, what do they deal with? What can a president issue a signing statement on? Five. Four. That wasn't in the list. Three. On the bill, on the bill, if he, um... Two. One. Actually, it's y'all. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 in what areas can the president issue a signing statement? How does this work? In what areas? Yeah. What does that mean? That's what I'm asking you. And that, I think that has to do with like, the bill. Like, um, so like, any class he wants to like, uh, agree upon, but like, exclude certain things, Anything that's he writes at the bottom. The president can write a signing statement about anything that's controversial. No, no, no. no it has to be a bill that's already been like passed, passed. all the way through the floor. It's been passed. I got that. Yeah. yeah. Controversial interpretation. And controversial that? interpretation. Now. Yeah. No. Minus three. Oh my God. Thank you. They didn't have any points. Go on. ahead. National. What does national security fall under? Because um. <laughs> you're right. What does it fall under, though? Because it's broader. Article 2 powers, yes! The president, the president issues signing statements regarding Article 2 powers, national security, commander-in-chief, these kinds of things. Can you tell me something about George W. when he wrote those signing statements? Five. If it, like, um... Four. If it gives Don't make it up. Three. No, 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 if it gives him reason, if, if it affects Two. national security, then we will... He will terrorize those people, I guess. Like, terrorize those people. Like, so okay, for that? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Why? 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 Okay, the signing statements. George W. issued more signing statements than all of the other American presidents combined in history. Make sure that you're clear on this. They do not immediately go into effect. There is question about whether or not they're actually legal at all. And the trick on this is, is that they do deal with Article II powers, which the president should have a right to determine, but by the same token, Congress passed the law. They're not part of the law. So make sure that you're clear on this. A signing statement is one of the five things that the president can do when presented with a validly passed bill. This is minute 12 of the How a Bill Becomes a Law video. Who? You gave me the last you gave me the last correct answer. Pick me a category. Uh, gotta go, gotta go. Civil rights. Uh, Civil rights. For two? Civil rights for two. First and I see. Brown versus Board of Education. Oh, Brown versus Board of Education. Oh, so easy. This is go ahead. Uh, a case in Kansas that ruled on whether segregation was legal or not. And was it legal or not? No, it wasn't. So Brown versus Board of Education was the case that desegregated the public schools. Yes. Click it. Desegregated the public schools. Yes. And y'all are the chiefs. 
So now y'all are in, you're in third place with zero. Yay! Okay, pick me a category. Gotta go. Which one? Executive one. Executive for one. Big spenders. First hand I see, according to the text and according to the articles, what is the number one attribute to be president? Go ahead. Minus one. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. One. Go ahead, John. Five. Courage. She, she Courage. Courageous. What's that? Courage. According to the articles, courage is actually one of them. What's the attribute according to the text? Four. Three. Two. One. Integrity. Minus one. Anybody? Three. Two. One point. Is it being tall? In the text? <laughs> in the text. No, minus no. one. We're the communists. Boom! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the number one attribute according to the text? I have integrity as a communist. Persuasion. Persuasion was the one. Who? You gave me the last correct answer. Pick me a category. Gotta go. And you're stopping it at 15, right? Okay, go ahead. Was someone right for what? Civil rights for four. Twelfth Amendment, first hand I see. What did the Twelfth Amendment deal with? And this one may not fit with civil rights exactly. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, how was it originally that the president and the vice president were selected? Originally, the electors would cast two ballots for the two top people I think should be president. Whoever placed first was president, whoever placed second was vice president. What was the danger of that? The danger of that was, yeah, you know, uh, Jefferson and Adams who hated each other and couldn't get anything done. And, and But there was something more to it than just hating each other. What was the problem that they had? Anybody in the group? What was the problem that Jefferson and Adams had? They hated each other, but what was well, the issue? They totally different ideologies about whether they... So they came from totally different parties. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Now understand, the Twelfth Amendment... The, the Twelfth Amendment, in the beginning of the country, if you got the most votes, you became president. If you got the second most uh, votes, you became the vice president. And what happened was that there were times where different political parties were elected as president and vice, which caused problems. To your point, the Twelfth Amendment created the Twelfth Amendment created so that president and vice president were voted on together. Click it for me. First hand I see. What's the significance of the 1800 election? Go ahead, Tim. You got it first. Who's got it second? Since the one elector from Virginia screwed everything up and cast both ballots instead of discarding one, you had a tie between Jefferson and Burr for who would be president. Jefferson and Burr. And, and how was this supposed to work? How was it supposed to work in 1800 with Jefferson and Burr? Okay. They weren't supposed the to house, tie. The house of no, no, no. They weren't supposed to tie. What was supposed to happen? Oh, well, all, all the electors were supposed to throw away one one of their ballots. Well, I don't need all that, but who was supposed to win? Who was supposed to be president? Jefferson. Jefferson. And Burr was supposed to be? Vice president. Okay. Jefferson was supposed to be president. Burr was supposed to be vice. And if you go back to this 1800 election, when they tied, where does it go? To the House of Representatives. It does go to the House of Representatives. And what happened when it got to the House of Representatives? Alexander Hamilton, even though he didn't like Jefferson, supported Jefferson and cast his uh, vote in his favor. Woo! One, two, three, four. It's Hamilton threw it to Burr. And what, pardon me, Jefferson. And what was Burr's reaction? He was fucking pissed. And what'd he do? He challenged uh, Alexander Hamilton to a duel. Challenged him to a duel. Him. And he did actually end up shooting him and... Killing him. He killed him. Then he fled the Appalachians, tried to start his family. And so what was he charged with? Treason. 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 One, two, three, four. Ultimately on this, the 12th Amendment came from the election of 1800. Here's the thing. When I ask you questions on this, he just laid out the perfect answer. So when I tell you that I'm asking for something specific, when you get on a roll, this is what I want on the exam. There's no fooling around on this. Pick me a category. Touch the house. 